Hello, welcome to Maths with EJD. In this video, I'll be considering simplex method solution to an investment portfolio problem. And you have the problem displayed on the screen. An investor has three different investment opportunities, I1, I2, and I3. Each investment yields a certain return and requires a certain amount of funds, time commitment, and risk tolerance. The investor wants to maximize their total return while staying within the constraints of the available resources. So the investment information is like this. Investment I1 yields a return of $40 for each unit invested. Investment I2 yields a return of $50 for each unit invested. Investment I3 yields a return of $35 for each unit invested. Resource requirement. Each unit of I1 requires two units of capital, three units of time, and one unit of risk tolerance. Each unit of I2 requires four units of capital, one unit of time, and two units of two units of risk tolerance. Each unit of I3 requires three units of capital, two units of time, and one unit of risk tolerance. And then we have resource constraints. The investor has a maximum of 100 units of capital available. The investor has a maximum of 60 units of time available. The investor has a maximum of 40 units of risk tolerance available. And the objective is to maximize the total return by deciding how much to invest in each opportunity. So that's what the question is like. So the first thing you want to do is to set your decision variables. So you can just say, let, uh, let's use I1 and I2 now. So let I1, uh, would that be good? Okay, let me just use our usual X1, X2, X3. Let X1 be equal to units, units of investment opportunity one that's i1 and let x2 be units like that's number of units right number of units of i2 and let x3 be equal to number of units number of units of i3 okay if we agree to do that then i mean the problems the questions are really straightforward um, it just shows that we need to, uh, we need to maximize. That's the objective to maximize the return, and for the return, right, we have forty dollar per unit invested in I one and so on and so forth. So it means we have to maximize Z equals forty X one plus fifty X two plus 35x3. That is the objective function. And then for the constraints, right? Uh, we can put these two together to get the constraints with the resource requirements and the resource constraints. So the two units of capital, four units of capital, three units of capital for the investment opportunities, one, two, three, respectively. So in that case, now it means we are going to have this subject to um 2x1 plus 4x2 plus 3x3. And the maximum, that means less than or equal to, less than or equal to 100. That's for capital. See, that's for capital. Then uh, we have three units of time, one unit of time, two units of time for I1, I2, I3 respectively. And total time available is 60 units, right? So that's 312. So that's 3x1 plus x2 plus 2x3. And that is less than or equal to 60. And lastly, we have um, one unit of risk tolerance, one unit of risk tolerance, two units of risk tolerance, and one unit of risk tolerance. That's one, two, one for risk tolerance. And the maximum risk tolerance is 40 units. So that's one, two, one. That's X1 plus two X2 plus X3, you know, is less than or equal to 40. So it, of course we need the non-negativity constraints that X1, X2, and X3 are all greater than or equal to zero. So that's all we have. And of course, that's the canonical form. That's the canonical form. 
That's more like the original form in which the question comes. So for us to be able to use simplex method, we need to convert from the canonical form to standard form. So that's what we are going to go to next. Um, okay. So in standard form now, in standard form, okay, we are going to, so of course we need to write, we write Z, right? Uh, the, so we are going to have maximize, maximize Z minus 40 X1 minus 50 X2 minus 35 X3, all of that equals zero. So you transfer all these things to the other side, right? Then subject to, so now we have all less than or equal to constraints. So we just need to add slack variables to all the three constraints. So we have 2x1 plus 4x2 plus 3x3 plus s1 less than or equal to 100, okay? Then, uh, so no, no longer less than or equal to it to be equality. Now, in standard form, we should have equality all the way. And this S1 will balance up the left hand side. So we can have that to be equal to 100. Then we have 3x1 plus x2 plus 2x3 plus S2 is equal to 60. Okay. And then we have um, x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 plus S3 is equal to 40. So the non-negativity constraint now will be x1, x2, x3, then s1, s2, s3, all greater than or equal to zero, okay? Since that is an order, then we can go for the, we can go for the tableau, the simplex tableau. So we have the simplex tableau now. Simplex tableau. Okay. Now, of course, you know, we start with the basic variable. <clears throat> As we know, the basic variables we start out by, uh, I mean, the non basic variables. Okay. So the basic variables, right? There'll be S1, S2, and S3. And of course, by the side, we, are still, we also have Z. So here we have X1 x2, x3, then s1, s2, and s3. So then b, that's the right-hand side. Okay. Um, so we have this now. And then... So if s1, s2, s3 are the basic variables, then it means x1, x2, x3 are the non-basic variables. And the idea is that at, from, from the outset, x1, x2, x3 are considered to have to, to be zero. So if you if x1, x2, x3 are zero everywhere, it means that automatically all, all this part will be zero, this part will be zero, this part will be zero, and s1 will be 100, s2 will be 60, s3 will be 60, right? Okay, I mean, that's all we have in the beginning. So corresponding to s1 now, you are going to have 100. So starting out s1 is 100 s2 is 60 while s3 is 40 okay but then we now need um we need to put the other values so which will be simply coefficients so for x1 x2 x3 so we have 2 4 3 then s1 is 1 so 2 4 3 1 in the first constraint, only S1 is there. S2 is not there, so the coefficient will be zero. Then for the second constraint, now we have three, one, two, okay? And S2 is one. S1 is zero, S2 is one, and S3 is also zero. So we have three, one, two, zero, one, zero. Three, one, two. S1 is not there, so it's zero. S2 is there, that's one. S3 is not there, that's zero. Then lastly, the last constraint, we have one, two, one. Then S3 is 1. 1, 2, 1. S3 is 1. So we have 1, 2, 1, 0, 0, 1. And then for Z, right, we have minus 40, minus 50, minus 35. Okay. Minus 40, minus 50, minus 35, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now, 
So it means when we start out like that, the the up to the value of the of the objective function is zero when we start out like this. So S1 is 100, S2, S1 is 100, S2 is 60, S3 is 40, and Z is zero in the beginning, right? So from here now we can we can go for the first iteration. Let's go for first iteration. Um okay. First iteration. In, the, in an exam situation, you may not have to waste time doing all this. I mean, it just goes straight to the point. But here, it's for the sake of clarity. So I'm going to do the table again. You know, in an exam situation, that may not be necessary. You have to save time. So S1, S2, S3. Then we have uh, B. Okay, since we are iterating now, we need ratio. We need ratio uh, because this is it's also important here. Mm. Yeah, so we need that ratio. So we have all this. So this is S1, S2, S3. So this is Z for the objective function. So again, this is so, okay, I guess I want to change now. This is two, four, three, one, zero, zero. And this is 100. And this is three, one, two, zero, one, zero, sixty. And then one, two, one, zero, zero, one, forty. Okay. And then this is minus 40, minus 50, minus 35, 0, 0, 0, then of course 0. So for first iteration, right, the, the first thing you want to do, of course, uh, you know, the idea is that you want to make sure that everything here, as, as far as there's a negative, there are, you have one negative value in that Z row, um, you have to keep iterating until all the negative values are gone okay and when you want to start you start with the biggest negative value that's the that's like the smallest value right the smallest value biggest negative value is like the smallest value there so um in that case of course we know that's minus 50 that's the biggest negative value okay now so by identifying that now it simply means that you are going to have uh you are going to have x2 okay because minus 50 is under x2 so it means you are going to have x2 this x2 now is going to replace something which you don't know yet how do you know what x2 is going to replace you have to go for uh division okay so you have to go for this for a division and that's where the ratio thing comes in so that's 100 divided by this four here, 100 divided by four, that's 25. Then the next one, 60 divided by one, this one. So that's 60. Then lastly, 40 divided by two. This 40 divided by this two, so that's 20. So what's the smallest of them all? So you see that the smallest is this 40 over two, which is 20. So in that case now, it means that, um, so you have to trace it down here. So that, that tells you that X2, this X2 now, X2 is coming to replace S3. And then that makes S2, uh, X2 is coming to replace S3. Okay. And that means that your Pivot is this S2. Uh, is this number two? This num number, that two now, is going to be your pivot. So now we are going to go on a matrix journey. So it's better to write out all that. I'm probably not worrying about the basic variable and all of and the rest. So you just have two, three, one, minus 40. Then you have four, 
one, two, minus 50. Then you have three, two, one, minus 35. Then one, zero, 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 one, zero, zero. Then zero, zero, one, zero. And then 100, 60, 40, and zero. Okay. So this is what we have now. So for easy referencing, you can have row one, row two, row three, and row four. Okay. Now the pivot, don't forget, is this guy. This is the pivot. So what that means is that you are going to turn this to one and everything above and below it will become zero. Now, the first thing, of course, you want to do is to, first of all, just turn that to one. So R1 remains R1, R2 remains R2, but the R old, new R3 is going to be half of the old R3 because we want these two to become one. So, so the other things below and above can become zero. Then R4, it remains R4, you know, for now. So we have uh, two, four, two, four, three, one, zero, zero, then 100, like that. Then next, R2 also remains the same. Three, one, two, zero, one, zero, 60. And then third line now, you divide three by two. So this is one over two. This is one. This is one over two again. This is zero. This is zero. This is one over two. 40 over two is 20. And then you have row four is row four. So minus 40, minus 50, minus 35, zero, 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 zero. Okay. Now, since this one, since the pivot has now become one this one so all these values this one above this one above and this one below have to go to zero so how do we pull that off so we have to make rules that will make sure that is possible first of all for row one so for row one what you have in row one is four right so what you can do is you can say that because one zero there you can say that row one minus four times row three Row three is the pivot. So that would be row one minus four times row three. Okay, so that way you can have four minus four times one, that'll be zero. Okay, then for row two now, thankfully row two, uh, in that pivot row, the pivot column, row two is already one. So you can just say row two minus row three, straight up. So zero, one minus one will just give you zero there. Then row three remains row three, being the pivot row, so row three, the new row three is the old row three still. Then for row four now, so you see row four has minus 50. So in that case now, to get zero there, so it has to be minus 50 plus 50 times one. So that will be R4, okay, R4 plus 50 times R3, okay? So now we can, we can go on the journey. So R1 minus 4R3. So that would be 2 minus 4 times 3. So that would be 2 minus 12. So there, uh, I mean, R1 minus 4R3. Oh, sorry. So this is R1 minus 4R3. So that would be 2 minus 4 times half. That would be 2 minus 2. So that's simply 0. So the next one is um, 4 minus four times one, that is also zero. Then the next one is three. So this three, okay, this three minus four times half. So that's three minus two, and that would be one. Then the next one is one minus four times zero, that is simply one. Next one is zero minus four times one, okay? This is, oh, sorry, zero minus four times zero. So you see, it's very easy to make mistakes. So you have to really be careful. That would simply be zero. Then again, you have zero minus four times half. That would be zero minus two. So this would be minus two now. Okay. And lastly, you have, um, okay, R2 minus four R3. Uh, no, R1 minus four R3. So that would be 100 minus four times 20. Okay. 100 minus 4 times 20, that'll be 100 minus 80. 
So this would be 20 now. Okay. So row three is just direct uh, subtraction. So three minus half. Three is six over two, right? Six over two minus one over two. That's simply five over two. That's a smart way to go. Then one minus one is zero. Then two minus half. Two is four over two. So four over two minus one over two. That's three over two. Then zero minus zero is zero. One minus zero is zero. Then zero minus half is minus half. Okay. Minus half. Uh, R2 minus R3. Yeah, that's minus half. Then um, again, R2 minus R3. So 60 minus 20. That would be 40. That's 60 minus 20. Following R2 minus R3. Then we go to R3. R3 remains what it is. So we have 1 over 2, 1. 1 over 2, 0, 0, half. 20. Nothing has changed. Then the last row now, big number. So we have R4 plus 50 times R3. So um, R4 plus 50 times R3. So that's 40 plus 50 times half. I mean, rather minus 40 plus 50 times half. That is minus 40 plus 25. And that will give us uh, minus 15. Okay, that's minus 15. Next, we have minus 50. Minus 50 plus 50 times 1. That would be 0 because that's minus 50 plus 50. Uh -huh. Then next, we have minus 35. We have minus 35 uh, plus 50 times half. You know, 50 times half is 25. That's minus 25, 35 plus 25. That's minus 10. Okay, minus 10. So next, you have... Uh, R4, okay, R4 plus 50 times this. So that's zero. Uh, R4 is zero plus 50 times zero. That's all zero. Then same, all zero. Then here, R4, zero plus 50 times half. That would just be 25, like that. Then we come here now, and we have um, R4, which is zero, plus 50 times 20. So that 50 times 20 is 1,000. So this place will be... 1000 so that's clear so we we finish up that so now we can uh well i mean we can take it back to the table and see if, if there's need for another iteration i can just go straight if i was in the exam hall here right uh, because i already see there's a negative here uh i already see there's a negative value here which means we have to keep on iterating but normally i'll just let's just do the tableau because this is for the sake of explanation in an exam situation you don't have to waste your time trying to do all that over and over again so i'll just come back and say bv so that we can we won't forget what we are doing don't forget what we have done now uh that x2 is coming to replace s3 that's really important so we have s1 s2 then x2 is coming to replace x3 right yeah, because X2 is coming to replace X3. That's important to note. And then we have Z like that. So again, we have X1, X2, X3, S1, S2, S3. Then we have B. Okay. So like this. So we have this. Okay, so we can put the values so zero zero one one zero minus two zero zero one one zero minus two twenty the next we have five over two zero three over two zero zero minus one over two forty then lastly uh, no not no lastly that's half now one one over two zero zero one over two then twenty and in the Z row, we have minus 15, 0, minus 10, 0, 0, 25. And this is 1,000. Okay. So now, okay, I mean, we are iterating, so we can afford to put that ratio part now. So we still need ratio here, ratio. 
in case we still need to do some iteration. Now, yeah, so from all indications, if you check this out, do we still have a negative value? Yes. What is the most negative? That should be minus 15. So minus 15. So minus 15 simply tells you now that um, it, tell, it simply tells you that x1, x1 now is coming to replace something. What is it coming to replace? We don't know yet until we do the ratio uh, check. So x1 now is coming to replace something, uh, one of the basic variables. So to know what exactly it is going to replace, then we go for the division. So you have 20 divided by zero. This is 20 divided by this zero. That is infinity. That's big. That's a very huge number. So, um, and you know, usually we are interested in the small number. So here you have 40 divided by five over two. That is 40 times two over five. So five in that, five in 40 is eight times two, that's 16. So we have 16 for the next one. We have 16. Oh, is it 16? Um, I doubt it. Is it really 16? No, 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 no. 40 divided by 5 over 2. Okay, I think I got that wrong. 5 should come up. Yeah, 5 should come up. 40 divided by 5 over 2 is 40 times 2. 40 divided by 5 over 2. Right? That is 40. Okay, that's fine. 40 times two over five. Okay, that's 16 actually. Oh, that's correct. Then uh, we have, uh, yeah, that's 16 there. Then we have 20 divided by half, which is 20 times two, and that is 40. So if you check this out, right, you see that um, 16 is the smallest, okay? 16 is the smallest, so it means that you can come this way. So that simply tells you, so because 16 is the smallest of all that, infinity is a very large number for sure. So uh, in that case now, you just know that X2, I mean, X1 is coming to replace S2. You know, in the first case, right? X2 came to replace S3, right? So now X1 is coming to replace S2. And if that is the case, this five over two, is our pivot five over two? Uh, let me do that so that it won't be confusing. Okay. Yeah. So this is our pivot. So this one it's a, it's that intersection of these two lines now. So this is our pivot, meaning that x one is coming to replace x is coming to replace s two. So again, we go and do the whole matrix thing. Um, so that we have zero, zero, one, one, uh, zero, zero, one, one, zero, minus two, then 20. Okay, this is five over two, zero, three over two, zero, zero, minus one over two, 40. If I was in an exam situation, I'll just multiply this on five over two. I'll multiply the second row by two over five directly and I'll get one. So, but here I have time to really explain. So, um, because this can take a lot of time. So this is one over two, one, one over two, zero, zero, one over two, 20. And then the last one, we have minus 15, zero, minus 10, zero, zero, 25 and this is 1000 okay so again do the rows in row one row two row three and row four and don't forget the pivot is this five over two so it means that the first thing we have to do is to make it into one make that into one right um so we go for that um so you can say that row one remains row one row two the new row two is going to be two over five. You know, two over five times five over two will give you one. So that'll be two over five of the whole of row two. Then row three remains row three. And row four 
remains row four. Okay, so let's do that. So that's um, zero, zero, one, one, zero, minus two, then 20. Okay, and then two over five times each of these. So two over five times, five over two is one. Two over five times zero is zero. Two over five times three over two. Two over five times three over two. So this cancels out. So we have three over five here. So two over five times zero is zero. Two over five times zero is zero. Two over five times minus half. Two over five times minus half. Two cancels. So we have minus one over five. Then two over five times 40. Two over five times 40. That is uh, five years one, five years eight. So that's 16. So this is 16 now. So that's 16. Let me remove all these ones to avoid confusion. Okay, so that's 16. Uh, let me write the 16 well so it doesn't look close to 10. It's a 16, actually. So R3 remains R3. So we have 1 over 2, 1, 1 over 2, 0, 0, 1 over 2, 20. Then lastly, we have minus 15, 0, minus 10, 0, 0, 25. And this is 1,000. Okay. So the last thing, now we need to make, uh, we need to make, so again, what's our pivot? Our pivot is five over two. So this is our pivot. Okay. So if since that, that is our pivot, right? It means that okay, this is already zero. So this has to be zero also. Okay, and this two will have to be zero. Okay, so we have to find a way of making all those zero. So that's the next thing to execute. So our uh okay, what did I do here now? This R1 remains R1 here, you know, so if R1 is R1. Um, so next, I now, so R1 remains R1 because it's already zero. We want it to be zero and it's already zero. Then R2 also remains R2. It's the pivot and we already have that place to be, uh, one is already here, so we don't have to worry. Then for R3 now, you know, we need this place to be zero. So, and the only way to do that is to say that old R3, minus half times R1, uh, minus half times R2, rather, which is the pivot, okay? R3 minus half, so R3 minus half times R2, you know, so that we get zero. Then R4 now is also uh, R4, the new R4 is going to be the old R4, plus 15, times R2, you know why? This is minus 15. So we need to say minus 15 plus 50 to get zero. So that's minus 15 plus 15 times one. That's why generally we have R4 plus 15 times R2, okay, to get that. So let's do this. R1 is R1, so we just have zero, zero, one, one, zero, minus two, then 20, like that. And then um, we now have, um, R2 is also R2, so that is 1, 0, 3 over 5, 0, 0, minus 1 over 5, minus 1 over 5, 16. Minus 1 over 5, 16. Uh, then, um, okay, R3 now, so half minus half times 1, that would be zero like that then again one so r3 that's one minus half times zero that is simply one okay then one over two so now we have one over two minus one over two times three over five that is one over two minus three over ten so lcm is ten two in ten is five minus three that's two over ten which is one over five so this place is one over five now. So next one, um, next one is, uh, okay. So again, zero minus half of that, that is simply zero. This is also zero. Then again, we have half. We have half, half minus one over two into minus one over five. So that is one over two plus one over 10. So LCM again is 10, 
2 in 10 is 5 plus uh, 10 in 10 is 1. That's 6 over 10. So that will simply be 3 over 5. So it means that this place is going to be 3 over 5 now. Then um, that's 3 over 5. Then here we have 20. So that's R3. That is 20. 20. That's 20. R3 minus half times R2. Okay, 20 times half times R2. R2 is 16. That's 20 minus 8. And the answer is 12. So this place is 12. And that's not all. We have the last row. So for the last row, we have R4 plus 15 times R2. So that's minus 15 plus 15 times this. That is 0. Then 0 plus 15 times 0. That is also 0. Then here, minus 10. Okay. Um, let me remove all this extra. You can, I mean, in the recording, you can go back to see all that. Okay. So we can have space for this new one. Okay. So we have minus 10, you know, it's R4 plus 15 times 3 over 5, right? So minus 10 plus 15 times 3 over 5, because it's R4 plus 15 times R2. So that's minus 10 plus 5 here is 1, 5 in 15 is 3, 3 times 3 is 9, so we have minus 1. So it means that this place is minus 1, okay, it's minus 1. Then we have uh, the next thing, that is R4 plus 15 times R2, that's 0 plus 0 there, that's 0. Next, we also have 0. Then lastly, oh, it's not last, uh, it's now 25, this 25 plus... 15, 15 times R2. 15 times R2, that's minus 1 over 5. Okay, that's 25. Plus and minus is minus 3. Here, 5 here is 1, 5 here is 3. That's 25 minus 3. So it means this place is going to be 22. Okay, then lastly, we have 1,000. You know, that's R4. 1,000 plus 15 times R2. R2 is 16, okay? So that's 1,000 plus 15 times 16. Of course, 15 times 4 is 60, 60 times 4. 60 times 4 is 240, yeah? So it means that 1,000 plus 240, that's 1,240. 1,240. So I can remove all these ones. So that place is 1,240. Again, we can go back to the table. If I, if I was in an exam situation, don't forget what I said. I can just keep, do. I'll just keep working the matrix until I have no minus here. Then I'll just take it back to the, to the original table, basically. So, uh, but in this case, uh, we have the luxury because it's an explanation that needs to be, uh, we have to make the points properly. So here, we have BV, the basic variable. Now, don't forget now that X1 is coming to replace S2. So we have S1, X1, X2. S1, X1, X2. Then we have Z. So we have X1, X2, X3, S1, S2, S3. And we have that B. Okay. Um. So what do we get? So S1, we just put all the values, right? Um, okay, we put all the values. So this is 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, minus 2, 20. Then this is 1, 0, 3 over 5, 0, 0, minus 1 over 5, 16. Then here we have 0, 1, 1 over 5, 0, 0, 3 over 5, 12. Then in the Z row, we have 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 22, 1,240. Okay. That's what we have there. Um, okay, I guess something might be out of order. 
Uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. Okay. So this this um hope everything is fine. Hope everything is fine. Uh two over five. Mm, I suspect something might just be might have been wrong from somewhere. Um we have three over five so in this table for instance we have zero zero we have zero zero one zero okay one three over two one over two minus ten one zero 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 i suspect something is wrong here Hmm. This S two is zero 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 zero. There should be one. This should be one or something like that. Let's see. So under S two now. That's second to the last. S two should be zero one S two. So let's see. R two minus R three. R two minus R three. for this so that's r2 r2 this is r2 minus r3 so this should actually be r2 minus r3 that is 1 minus 0 so this should actually be 1 here so this should be 1 right here okay so that when we come here this is this is actually one okay even while we do this so that place should be one so uh so this is actually still one okay now by the time we do the maths so to get this place now we need to, that's two over five it should be two over five so this is two over five based on you know two over five times r2 two over five times one is two over five there okay and um so of course r2 remains r2 here so we still have so it's two over five is that s2 um okay Uh, okay, I think it's uh, second to the last, right? So this is zero. This is zero. Well, this is two over five. This is two over five. It's very easy to, to miss it. So let's be careful. So that's two over five. And then when we come here, right? R2 remains R2. So this is still, this is 2 over 5. Okay. That is 2 over 5. Now, um, when we come to this table, where we have 0, 0, 1, 0, like, um, where we have 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 3 over 5, 1 over 5 minus 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Then here, it should be 0. Aha. So when we come here, for instance, now, something should change here. So this is R2 remains R2. But here we need R3. We need R3 minus half of R2. So that is this 0. this zero sorry r3 that is zero minus half of r2 so that would be zero minus half of two over five this cancels out so we have minus one over five so this under two over five under that two over five 
uh, yeah, on that is two over five now. We should have minus one over five here. So minus one over five. Okay. And that would have caused a lot of problem. So this is minus one over five. Okay. So it should be this. Minus one over five beside three over five. Okay. So these two now. Two over five. Then minus one over five. Two over five. Minus one over five. Yes. And of course, that will now be. So that should also affect. I think that should affect. Okay, this is zero here, right? For 25. So this is still zero here. All right. Then when we do this now. So R4 times 15 times R2. So this should be. Um, zero, I mean, this zero plus 15 times R2 is now two over five. That's two over five. So that's 15 here is one. 15 here is three. And that is six. So this should actually be six. This is six. Yeah. So that is six. Okay, I guess now we should be in order. So this is six. Yeah, it's gonna be really tricky. So let's be careful. Zero one zero 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 one zero one three over five one over five minus one one zero zero zero. Uh zero two over five minus one over five six minus two minus one over five three over five twenty two and twenty sixteen twelve one two four zero. Okay, so we have this now. Um, okay. I mean, from this table, it looks like we might still need another iteration. And the reason is, if you check this place, we still have this minus one as a negative thing. So we, we still need our ratio. We still need our ratio. Okay. All right. So now we know that X3 now is going to replace something. What it is, we need to, to, we don't know directly until we do the ratio thing. So we have 20 divided by one, which is 20. Uh, okay, 20, 20 divided by one, that is, okay. So this 20 divided by this one, that's 20 divided by one, that is 20. Then 16, 16 divided by three over five, 16 divided by three over five, that is 16 times five over three. So that is 80 over three, you know, and 80 over three is, uh, if you punch the calculator for 80 over three, that should be 26 point something, 80 divided by three, uh, Clearly that's bigger than 20, but let's be sure. Um, 80 divided by three. 80. Uh, 80 divided by three. 80 divided by three. That's 26.67, 26 26.67. So clearly bigger than 20. Uh, I mean, 80 divided by three is 26.67. So it's this is 26.67. Then we have 12. So now we have 12 divided by one over five. That is 12 times five. And that is simply 60. Uh, that is 60. So this is 60. Okay. So... I mean, talking about the ratios now, okay. It, um, that place is too small. Okay, let, let me just repeat it right here. Let me repeat it by the side. Imagine the ratio here. So imagine we are doing the ratio uh, by this side now. Ratio. 
so this is 20. Twenty divided by one, that is simply twenty. Then the next one is sixteen divided by three over five, that is sixteen times five over three, that is eighty over three, which is twenty six point six seven. Okay. Then lastly, we have twelve divided by one over five, that is twelve times five over one, that is simply sixty. So you can see that the smallest one, the smallest one is that 20. So what that simply means is that um, this one is our pivot now, or pivot as you like. Uh, so X3 now is coming to replace S1, okay? X3 is coming to replace X uh, S1. So that means that uh, we can go again and do the whole matrix, the whole matrix gymnastics. Um, let's do that. So we have zero, zero, one, you know, which is the pivot now, zero, zero, one, one, zero, minus two, 20, okay. Then one, zero, three over five, zero, two over five minus one over five 16 then we have zero one one over five zero minus one over five three over five 12 and lastly zero 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 right rather zero zero minus one zero six twenty two one two four zero all this and then Thankfully, this is already one, so we don't have to worry about it. So we have row one, row two, row three, and row four. So that, uh, so what we just need to do now is to make this one into, all this will be zero, basically, because they are below the pivot. So, and the way to do that, we already know, is to say, of course, row one remains row one. The new row one is the old row one. Then now the new row two is going to be um, the old row two minus three over five times the old row one, okay? So that way we have three over five minus three over five times, and that's zero. Then for the new row three now, is going to be the old row three minus one over five times the old row one being the pivot. Then the old row, four, the new row four is going to be the new row four. It's already minus one. So we'll just add it straight. So that'll be row four plus row one because minus one plus one is simply zero, which is what we need. So let's do that. So the new row one is the old row one. So we just have zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero minus two, 20. Okay. Then row two. Uh, for row two now, we have this row two. Row two here is three over five. So we have three over five minus three. Okay, I mean, that's simply zero two. So this is, okay, let's even start from here. So row two minus three over five times row one. So the row two, this is row two. Three over five times zero is zero. So this is simply one right here. Okay, so next zero, Zero minus three over five times zero, that's simply zero. Then three over five minus three over five times that, that is also zero. Then this is zero minus three over five times one. This is minus three over five right there. Then the next one, minus one over five, minus one over five, minus three over five times two. So that is, uh, times minus two rather. So minus one over five, that's row two, minus three over five times row one. So this is minus one over five plus six over five. So minus one times plus six is five. Five divided by five is one. So this place is one. Uh, something is not right there. I guess I've skipped something. Um, okay, so I mean, 
this one we know this is this this is the last one now this is what i just did this is one but here i skipped this so this is two over five minus whatever it adds zero so this is just going to be two over five directly and then we do the same here so we have row two which is 16 minus three over five times row one that's three over five times 20 so that's 16 minus 5 in 20 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 16 minus 12 is 4. So this place is 4. Like that. Then this is tedious. So, but we need just to pay attention. Okay. So now row 3. Row 3. The new row 3 is going to be the old row 3. Minus 1 over 5 times the old row 1. 1 over 5 times 0 is 0. So this is just going to be 0. Okay. Then uh, we have the next one. Um, 1, row 3, right? This is row 3. 1 minus 1 over 5 of 0. That's simply 1 there. Then the next one is row 3. That is 0. Minus 1 over 5 times row 1. So minus 1 over 5 times row 1 is minus 1 over 5. So 0, zero minus 1 over 5 is simply minus 1 over 5. Then we go again to, to this. Minus 1 over 5 minus 1 over 5 times 0. That's just also minus 1 over 5. Then 3 over 5. 3 over 5 minus 1 over 5 times minus 2. That is 3 over 5 plus 2 over 5. So 3 over 5 plus 2 over 5, that's 5 over 5. This is simply 1. Okay. Um, I guess something is wrong somewhere. Ah, this is serious. <laughs> okay. So I mean, this is uh, R3, 0 minus 0, done. 1 minus 0, done. Then 1 over 5. Yeah. 1 over 5 minus 1 over 5 times 1, that's simply 0. Okay, uh, that is 0. Now here, so 0, 0, minus 1 over 5 times that, that's minus 1 over 5. Then here, minus 1 over 5 minus 0, that's minus 1 over 5. Yeah, so now what we've done, what I just did is 3 over 5 minus 1 over 5 times minus 2. That is simply 1, like that. And then we come here, we have uh, 12. So 12, this 12 now. So that's 12 minus 1 over 5 times R1. So R3 minus 1 over 5 times R1. So that's 12 minus 1 over 5 times 20. So that is 12 minus 5 in 20 is 4. So it means this place is 8 now. Okay. Then we go, last one is simple we just add corresponding terms so uh here now i have r4 plus r1 so 0 plus 0 that is 0 then 0 plus 0 again is 0 then minus 1 plus 1 that is also 0 so 0 plus 1 that's 1 right then 6 plus 0 that is simply 6 22 plus minus 2 that's 6. 22 minus 2 that is 20 then the last but not the least, which is like the final showdown, is 1 to, 1 to 40. That's R4 plus R1. 1 to 40 plus 20. That is 1,260. Okay? 1,260. So um, you can remove all this. So you can see it requires a lot of attention. Lots of carefulness. So that's one two sixty. So, um, since the pivot now, uh, like uh, the pivot is actually this one, right? That's where we are coming from. Yeah, uh, yeah. The pivot is that one already. This one. So everything below it is zero. So let's take it back to the table. So let's take it back to the table where we have the basic variables. Now you see for this one now, x3 is replacing s1. So we have x3, x1, x2. 
x3, x1, x2, of course we have z here, so that we have x1, x2, x3, s1, s2, s3, and then we have b. I don't think we need ratio anymore because I can already see uh, from here, I can already see from here that everything is positive now. So um, that's more like we have reached the optimal solution, thankfully. It's been a stressful journey. So uh, now we can say we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, minus 2, 20. Then this is 0, 1, 0, minus 1 over 5, minus 1 over 5, 1, 8. Then we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 6, 20. Uh, not too fast, not too fast. Um, not so fast, rather. Um, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, minus 2. Then this is 1, 0, 0, minus 3 over 5, 2 over 5, 2 over 5, 1, 4. Then 0, 0, 0, 1, 6, 20. No. Oh. Okay. 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 2. 1, 0, 0, minus 3 over 5, 2 over 5, 1, 4. Then 0, 1, 0, minus 1 over 5, minus 1 over 5 again, 1, 8. Then lastly, 0, 0, 0, 1, 6, 20, 1, 2, 6, 0. And like I said earlier, because everything here is non-negative, we can say that at this point, uh, okay, at this point now, so since, since there is no, since there is no negative, negative value in the Z row, that is, All, all numbers, all numbers in the Z row, in the Z row, are all non-negative, all non-negative. We have reached, we have reached optimal solution. We have reached optimal solution. So since you have reached optimal solution, the next thing to do is to read out our solutions, okay? And, and like you know, anything that is non-basic, anything that is here at this point in time is a basic variable. So everything here is basic. So everything that is not there is non-basic, which would be zero. So it means that, um, okay, so we have our basic variables, basic variables, and they are x1, they are, of course, let me follow what the table looks like. That's x3, x1, x2, x3, x1, x2. So x3, x3 is simply 20, x1 is 4, x2 is 8, okay? That's 20, 4, 8, 20, 4, and 8, right? Then... Talking about basic variables now, basic, I mean, non-basic variables rather, um, say non-basic variables, non-basic non variables, non-basic variables. This will be automatically S1, S2, S3, and they are always zero, you know, all non-basic variables are zero. Then the the maximum value of the objective function, you just read it off as usual. Z is one two six zero. Okay, that is one two six zero. Okay, so, um, so the optimal solution, the optimal solution, 
is such that such that uh is such that we require we require we require four units four units of investment one four units of investment one then eight units eight units of investment eight units of investment two you know this is one right eight units of investment two and and 20 units 20 units of investment three 20 units of investment three in order in order uh you know remember our objective function so all the calculation can make you forget where we are coming from we want to maximize the total return okay to uh, we want to maximize total return by deciding how much to invest in each opportunity okay so so um to, so the optimal solution is such that we require four units of investment one eight units of investment two and 20 units of investment three in order in order to have to have a maximum to have a maximum total return the maximum total return of $1,260 $1,260 that's how that goes and of course for you to know if you are really correct you have to check with the objective function the objective function is 40 50 35 right 40 50 35 so you can check you can always check right check Z is 40x1, 50x2, 35x3. So if you do evaluate Z at um, X at 4820, okay? 4, 8, and 20. So that means you have 40 times 4, okay? Plus 50 times 8, plus 35 times 20. So that means we have um, 40 times, so that's 160 plus 400 plus 700, right? 700, okay. So 700 plus 400 is 1,001. 1,001 plus 160 is 1,260. So that, that works. So that's how we go. So, I mean, it's been a very long one because it's really tedious to do this. If you have not subscribed to this channel, be sure to do that right away and hit the notification bell so you can always get alerted each time a new video is released. And don't forget to comment. Tell me if you wanted to, to solve a problem or teach a, a particular topic. And don't, uh, always like and share so that more people can have access to these things. So like, come your way again. Keep optimizing. Have a great time. Bye.